if you look at the last 10 years, uh, the S&P 500 has outperformed emerging market equities by 100%, right? 10 percentage points per year. Uh, we've also seen a significant amount of money go into cash this year because of the crisis. And so it's our view that in a more benign uh, political environment, there's quite a bit of cash uh, sitting on the sidelines and that has been hiding in U.S. assets for a few years that could potentially be deployed into, into foreign markets and emerging markets. And we think that's probably uh, one of the key potential pivots uh, in the aftermath of this election result. Eric, that's quite something because you're suggesting that we could see almost a sea change here and that it won't be a temporary adjustment. So if that's the case, if EM is ready for this breakout outperformance period, I mean, where do you want to be positioned? What looks to benefit the most? Well, I think the first uh, region that will benefit would be Asia. And, and I say that for, for two reasons. Number one, uh, Asia's markets tend to be a little bit lower beta. In other words, a, a little bit lower volatility uh, than some of their peers and, and cousins across other emerging markets. And so to the extent that people are going back into EM, uh, perhaps for the first time for many years, Asia would be the first destination. Now, the other factor, which is incredibly powerful, is that China has been uh, a strong recovery force, both economically mm. and in terms of financial assets. Uh, RMB remains uh, re very stable. And that's an attractive uh, pull for, for currencies in Asia. So I would expect Asia uh, to be the first port of call for, for EM investors. So do, are you making this call more based on growth fundamentals and what you expect in terms of rate differentials rather than on the political side, which is what we keep hearing about and hopes for perhaps a U.S.-Asia reset and a softer tone coming from Biden towards China? You, you actually can't separate the two, Nancy. I think they're incredibly um, you know, linked in, in a number of ways. The political story is one about reducing uncertainty or reducing risk premia. And for emerging markets, taking away some uncertainty is, is, is a powerful leg of support. Uh, on the economic side, look, we all know that the economic challenges remain. Uh, growth will be uh, under pressure in a number of places, uh, Europe and the U.S. Uh, as an example, where we've seen uh, a resurgence of COVID infections. But the key point, though, is that trade between emerging market countries has actually performed very well in the last couple of quarters. And in fact, emerging market exports are back to pre-COVID levels. It's only taken two quarters to recover, uh, whereas after the global financial crisis, that re recovery took as many as, as six, seven, eight quarters. And so there is an economic as well as a political story here. And, and I think that that's very uh, positive and supportive for a number of emerging markets.